Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem Show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter, coming at you live from Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA at Mayhem Central, uh, ready to talk professionalized versions of wrestling in a ring. Yes. With me, as usual, is my compatriot from day one of this show, it's Papa Lunchbox. Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here. I've got chainsaws in my brain. My soul is made of soft serve and macaroni and cheese, and I'm ready to do a small dance. Oh, okay. Um, sure. Uh, also with us, uh, joining us, he's uh, you, I, I just saw him Saturday at the Renegade Wrestling Alliance show out there in West Newton. He's a sound guy down there. And lights. You do the lights, too. He's Hot Wheels at Hot Wheels RWA on the Twitters. Yes, Lord. I, I, this past Saturday, I was a man of many talents. There was lights, there was bells, there was sound. If there was something needed to be done, the only thing I didn't do was the cameraman. And don't you ever think I'm going to do it, Sorg? No. No, no, no. 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 I'm not going to play cameraman. <laughs> we were, we were, were kind of joking about that, weren't we? No, no, no. He put, since I'm on wheels, he put me on mobile, rolling around the ring. I could see you, sir. You're, you're sick-minded like I that. I think we could have, you're like, kind of. yes, I'm back you, on you, the Wrestling Mayhem show. You kind of have a, a, a build-in. We can do like a slide cam kind of thing with you. I mean, I think it would work out really well. DJ Lunchbox, talk him out of this, please. Hmm? No. <laughs> no, you're the perfect steady cam. <laughs> He's right. He's I right. There you go. Say. Exactly. Yeah. And after that, I think it's the perfect time to introduce returning to the show. He's going to talk wrestling with us, and we're going to talk about what he's up to as well here. Joe Dombrowski of Outsource Announcing, International Wrestling Cartel, Ring of Honor announcer from time to time as well. He does everything. He's here with us tonight via the webcam. How are you doing, sir? Thank you very much uh, for having me back on my uh, uh, vintage uh, mid 2000s at best webcam. Uh, which is currently, uh, I tried to order a new one in time when I found out I was booked. It didn't work, but it is still my pleasure to be here. Uh, considering every promotion I work for decided to run on the same day in December, I have a very wide open schedule and I'm happy to spend a little bit of it here with y'all. Awesome. Awesome. Ready to go. And, uh, of course, if you're uh, just discovering us, we're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We're recording here every Tuesday night, live.sorgatronmedia.com, about 9 p.m. Eastern time. You can join us in the chat room uh, when the stream when the stream's rolling. And uh, and uh, and you can also draw, uh, please subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, I- uh, YouTube, and iHeartRadio. Uh, you can also drop us a line to that email address. We all know. Good times. Good, Good times. times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the phone number 412-206-WMS0. Um, and uh, please, uh, YouTube, uh, iTunes comments, etc. You can also check us out. Uh, support us, please, over at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. As mentioned at the Give top of the show. Goddamn money. Including our patrons already, uh, our friends from the WrestlingRevolution.com and Bo Diggity. Woo! Of course, and now it's contest time, as we've been doing here lately over the past month. We're putting out a contest every week. Uh, last week, we had asked you, um, uh, we, we talked about who, who would you want to come back. 
uh, to or uh, who would you want interviewed? Who do you think would be the most interesting interview in the vein of uh, you know Facebook man and CM Punk being featured on these podcasts and being very controversial? Um, you know who 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 would you have an a, a idea from? There was some conversation about that I know on the Facebook and such. Uh, but if you uh, had a chance, if you hashtag WMS return to get a free copy of of RWA Salute the Troops two from uh, just uh, back in November, uh, including Hurricane Helm, Sanjay Dutt, Shane Douglas, all involved in that and that goes this week to uh bob at polish hill who uh, uh responded kurt angle um and i did not get to check out i know he was on the uh uh, uh, uh pyro and ballyhoo uh with vince russo uh it's a kind of just i don't know i didn't jump into it after i found out he's just going back to tna uh but i, I am kind of curious it's always interesting to see what's going on with him uh so thanks for that now the new contest for this week uh we are you know, there's two things going on of course you know we want to get some itunes comments and also uh there's winner takes all uh coming up this weekend from the international wrestling cartel if you're in the pittsburgh area at iwcwrestling.com joe dabrowski will be there big show going on matt hardy will be there taking on friend of the show john mcchesney uh zima ion i believe is on the on the card as well i haven't looked at this for a couple days to see who's coming in um all kinds of stuff going on so in 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 light of that other friends of the show dalton castle rj city facade aj styles all featured on that card um, you can check out more about that at iwcwrestling.com. Uh, but if you drop into our iTunes, look for the Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, drop a comment on there, and uh, and uh, you'll have a chance to win not one, not two, but all three of the last three Winner Takes All events. This features such great stuff as a ladder match between Facade, Matt Cross, um, uh, Hallow Wicked, and I'm forgetting the fourth one that's in there. Uh, Cole Caban is on these. Matt Stryker, uh, Tommy Dreamer, uh, Sammy Callahan, uh, Logan Shulo before he went off to NXT. I think his, his last match is actually on the 20, 2013 edition of this. Uh, you'll get all three digitals. Uh, and you have a chance to win all three of those uh, by dropping a comment. And tune in here next week, uh, WMS 450, big 450th holiday edition episode and we'll announce the winner who gets that no mad mike you are not in the running but i'd appreciate the rating on itunes anyways from you uh so go check that out um i don't know joe joe you experienced all three of these winner takes all in person uh this is usually iwc's big uh year ender uh, event uh, do you have anything to say about uh you know some some memories from that the big four-way ladder match or or or, or callahan shulo or or or, or even uh, shulo send off last year I, I think every single year uh a winner takes all is really the emotional zenith of the calendar year it is really the event where um everybody steps it up a notch because this is um, their last chance to to make an impression in in uh, in 2014, and certainly have the momentum to uh, uh, carry us into 2015. Uh, I have a lot of, uh, of of very unique memories from there. It was last year at Winner Take All when uh, I was working with Matt Stryker, if you recall. It was Stryker uh, and Andrew Palace in the Super Indy Qualifier, and uh, I had Stryker next to me to uh, call two very memorable matches. Uh, the three-way match between Colt Cabana, Johnny Gargano, and Facade, and uh, Dalton Castle's uh, match with uh, John McChesney, I do believe. Um, and, and those uh, those were two big headline makers and two, and two front runners for match of the year. You talked about uh, Shulo and Callahan from the year before, I think. Uh, that was uh, really an unscheduled match, if I recall. That was mm-hmm. that was a substitution for Facade, who had been injured. Um a bit beforehand, but but even um, even in those adverse circumstances, to produce a main event like that with two guys that let's face it are now just doing a hell of a job down in Florida for NXT. Um, Sammy as Solomon Crow, I don't think Logan has has hit uh, television in a, a defined role yet, but I think he's close. Um, had a chance to talk to him a couple weeks ago and uh, uh, heard some very good things about. Uh, his development and what he's doing down there. So, uh, uh, you know, the, the cream rises to the top at an event like this. And uh, I'm looking forward to it this weekend because uh, uh, no matter what, uh, uh, you know, some shows are better than others. But when you talk about the big events of the IWC calendar year, like a Super Indy or like a Winner Takes All, uh, 
every time it delivers top to bottom. Awesome. So go check that out. Just drop a drop an iTunes comment and you could have a chance to win that. And if you're in the area, please drop down uh, to IWC show this weekend. Uh, so let's get started with the fan mail. And I know, uh, uh, LB, you already called one out here. I did. That's true. That thing you just said, it's true. Um, <clears throat> but not the first one. What? Oh, <laughs> well, you don't have to go in order. That's fine. Okay, you got it. Slammy Award for the best fan slash emailer is me, bitches. In the inaugural patron, the future of the WMS, the number one continued contender. Oh, God. It's all right. It's all right. Just take a Listen, breath. I, take I, a I, breath. I should have prefaced everything. I, I'm not feeling well. I haven't been able to speak properly for a couple of days. So doing a podcast where I speak primarily is not the best idea. Right. right. So I apologize advance to Sierra 2 k the future of the wms the number one contender to sorg's heart and the upcoming 2014 fan of the year and hmm. that name is zero 2 k holy bonkers what a weekend of wrestling new japan ending their tag tournament and finalizing their wrestle kingdom nine card brought to you by gfw him him Chikara with their season finale, ROH with final battle, CM Punk joining a fake sport, and AAA with Guerrera de Titanes, that's probably offensive, sorry, and the crowning of a new world heavyweight champion, El Petron Alberto, again, I'm really sorry, and that's the and that's only what I was able to check out, surely there was a lot more going on, meanwhile, in WWE, the bunny was twerking, Michael! <laughs> Anyway, with so many name drops, I don't want this email to be sent to the Indie Mayhem show. So here's a picture of Hulk Hogan with spiky hair. Woo, 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 brother dude Jack. And then yep. there's a picture. There it is. And here's a picture of Hulk Hogan without his facial hair. And then there's another picture. I get you. So question. Second. What are some memorable physical changes or attire changes that wrestlers have well, done? Hold on. I want to back up a moment. I want to back up a moment. Scratching your head. Hold All on. Right. Hold on. Hold on. Hogan's chin is really small. Yes. Like scary small. Yeah, he needs facial hair. That's weird. Yes. Okay, oh, yes. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> uh, have a good one, WMS. Last week's discussion was awesome. I always enjoy when topics are covered that everyone has a hard opinion on or against, and we're not just agreeing on stuff. This is a hint that I need more Eamon versus Mad Mike in my life. <sighs> Remember huh. to watch Lucha Underground, and if you voted for Roman Reigns to win Superstar of the Year, then I hope your dick falls off. Or the opposite, if you're a girl or something. Zero out. P.S. I don't really wish for your dick to fall off. It sounds really painful and probably something hard to mentally overcome. But uh, just don't vote for Roman Reigns. Oh, just don't. Geez. Yo, that was, um, I, I know we were talking about that uh, when it went down last night. Um, so Roman Reigns, the Superstar of the Year. What? Yeah. Why not? Why not? Nothing matters. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I say of all the people, I figured like a Daniel Bryan would have gotten something like that. Yeah. Um but I don't know. I you know Or or Sork, uh, a much more deserving superstar, uh John Cena. Oh, of course. Of course yeah, John Cena, he's done a I whole mean, lot. Yeah. That's Look at true. all the stuff he's done this year. Uh huh. It should have been John Cena. Uh huh. Uh, I was surprised it wasn't John Cena. Right? Honestly. Although I robbed. looked through, I actually looked through his last several years of Superstar of the Year. John Cena got it once, maybe twice since 2009. Uh, Chris mm -hmm. Jericho one year, I think that was when Jer Chris Jericho was uh, wearing a suit and saying big words. Uh, CM Punk won it one year. I think maybe Randy Orton, if, if I recall when I was looking it up. So I, it seems... I don't know. It, it was a good point last night. Somebody brought up if you if you ended it like after the Royal Rumble. Yes, he's superstar of the year or something like that. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I just don't see it. Um, and, and the injury doesn't help, of course. But I don't know. Of course, uh, he's going to come back in a big way here uh, post injury and uh, probably a matter of weeks. I, if 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 I'm correct. So, uh, Joe, what do you think about uh, Roman Reigns being pushed as the superstar of the year? Is it deserve it or is it? Uh, I, I don't know. I, is it because of his awesome hair? Um, 
is awesome wet hair. Right? Awesome wet hair. <laughs> uh, I, I was a little surprised to hear that, but it makes sense from a business standpoint. He's the guy that needs it. If there's any rub, so to speak, to come from uh, uh, being a Slammy Award winner, I guess uh, he would need it. Um, let's face it, he'll be back before Daniel Bryan. Um, John Cena has, um, you know, his, his, his spot is, is as secure as it's going to get. Um, you know, Brian won't be back anytime soon. Orton wasn't there. Um, it's, uh, he's kind of the, the by default guy. And I don't know how, um, legitimate the voting was. Um, <laughs> I don't, I mean, uh, I've heard them claim in the past it was pretty, pretty on the level. However, the way that the awards recipients match up with the uh, segments of the show uh, lead me to put on my conspiracy theory hat again. Uh, but it makes sense if there's if there's a chance if they're holding on to a hope that Roman is the guy for Brock once they get to California for WrestleMania, uh, he's going to need all the help he can get uh, because there's really nobody else healthy for that spot that I see. But at the same time, you risk the same thing that, that in my opinion, did a lot of damage to Cena when he started, um, that being too much too soon and force feeding. So I think that's the bigger question is, is what is the future for Roman Reigns and whatever that is, is it the right move? Right. Right. Certainly. Well, we got another email here uh, from Mr. Tech Wood Drive. He's got some commentary wait, from. Wait, wait, oh, wait. 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 I'm we sorry. Didn't, we didn't. I'm sorry. We didn't actually answer Zero 2K's question. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot where we're at. Um, so the, uh, the question was, hold on. Yes. Bring it up. Exactly what, it was. what are some memorable physical changes or attire that wrestlers have done that just left you scratching your head? And uh, I can think of one right off the top of my head, and that's when Dolph Ziggler was a brunette briefly. For like a week, right? Yeah, just for a week, and everyone hated it so much, he was like, yeah, this is dumb. <laughs> you feel like that was like some weird like agent advice in the back, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe he wanted to try it. Who knows? Oh, man, I can't think of one. Uh, uh, Wheels, do you have one? You might be muted. Okay. Yeah, I forgot I was muted. It's okay. <laughs> um, actually, I have no clue. I know what he's talking about, but I'm not remembering the year or anything. To be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for uh, me, I, I remember a conversation I had with some cousins that were like, "When did Undertaker lose the hat?" Hmm. Mm. I mean, more more a dress kind of uh, change, I guess. But I mean, it, that and uh, Jericho losing the hair. Yeah, it, yeah, was a big because change for him. Because especially was hoodie, uh, yeah, hoodie wise, and mm -hmm. like you said, Jericho to hair. Hmm. So. Wow. Uh, Joe, do you do you have any uh, big physical changes that uh, across wrestling that kind of scratched your head? Um, well, I think um, it had a lot of people scratching their heads. What I'll, I'll reference, uh, I personally enjoy it. You can call it a guilty pleasure, but uh, probably one of the most infamous ones was the one man gang morphing into Akeem, <laughs> the African Dream, who happens yes. to be uh, hanging out with me right here. Look at that. <laughs> that uh, having nice. him in, in uh, uh, some back alley rising out of an oil barrel or whatever, whatever that segment was, uh, complete uh, personification of, of 80s WWF and, and over the top. And so obviously a rib on Dusty. I don't care what anybody says. Um, <laughs> but absolutely one of my favorite things that ever happened. And I cannot give you a logical reason why. Yeah, I, they, I recent. I think they touched on that on Countdown, maybe recently. I, I saw something on Network where they, they kind of went over that, and they're like, "It's a one man gang. What are you talking about?" You know. Uh, I remember that. I think I remember that segment from some old WWF tape back in the day, and always perplexed me. Although Akeem, 
I know Akeem more than I do One Man Gang. So I'm, had a good run. I'm flipped. Both. Like my exposure when I got into wrestling, I think was Akeem. Or, 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 I, I, and then and, 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 and I found out he's a one man gang. Like that's the weird thing for me. Like I get mad when he comes to legend shows as a one man gang. I want mm-hmm. him as Akeem. But I don't think he fits the outfit anymore. That's what I had always heard. Well, it that fits they, the outfit. They it wanted, was they wanted giant... Akeem for the gimmick battle royal at WrestleMania 17, but he did not fit the gear anymore. So that's why it was one man gang. Oh, that's right. It was kind of like a body suit, blue, blue thing, right? He was like yes. a big blueberry mm-hmm. walking plus, around. Plus, plus, Vince owns Akeem. He doesn't own one man gang. So that's why we have to put up with one man gang on the Indies. Oh, and it was in uh, WCW and such, right? Yes. So, yeah, yeah. Eh, oh, well. Um, well, Sorg, yeah. it was one of those weird ones we were just talking about changes is Triple H's haircut. You're so used to his long hair, and then he cut it short. Strange enough, the short hair works for him now. And But it was still a shocker to see the change. And I'm like, okay, I kind of like it, but wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think he looks way better with the short hair. When I see him with long hair now, like when I saw when I watched Blade 3, it's, uh, it's real awkward. Awesome, awesome. Um, and... <laughs> And that should be everything from that email, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was the last question. A little trouble juggling here today. Sorry, guys. Um, so I got another email here from Pierre K., Mr. Techwood Drive, longtime emailer to the show. Uh, he comments to the WMS Nation. So far, I've seen the new day in action, and I've seen the new blue scheme since my blue since blue is my favorite color. Uh, you know, I, yeah, it's, it's they're very blue. By the way, I I love that they did the the slammy pose as they came out this week. Did you guys catch that? No. Uh, oh wow! Well, no. Sorry. Was it? I think I think like Xavier held up Kofi or vice versa or something as uh, beside the statue. Um, that, that was a pretty good spot. Um, mm-hmm. He goes on. Uh, it's been two weeks since they got here, and the Dustbusters uh, dropped the promo on the Titan Tron after the start. Cesaro salad Tyson kid match um, and uh, you know is this a positive promo like CM Punk did when his drug pre-promos uh, I, I can't wait for this team to blossom see you guys later so he's got some commentary about the new day how are you guys feeling about them two weeks in I felt like Raw last week was kind of bad for them uh, uh, kind of weirdly put and thrust in being thrust into that tag team turmoil we got to see them do a little bit more um do, do you think this is a good reboot for these guys lb i uh, i would i would say yes just because they're getting on tv more they're getting mm-hmm. more exposure which is um uh it's always a good thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. reels you're saying something oh uh i was just gonna say i mean i agree with lb it's they're getting more tv time and I uh, feel, honestly, the blue, I swear, WWE has this, like, obsession with blue. I mean, blue teased, uh And if you look at Sin Cara and uh, the other guy <laughs> uh, on NXT, they, they just have this, like, Kalisto. love of blue. I mean, I like blue myself, but... I'm not going to put every wrestler I know in. Yeah, but they, they, they're also playing with those that they're like wearing neon and stuff too. Yeah. But I mean, is, honestly, I love the mixture of the three together. Mm-hmm. They're very good. I, I love it. It's It fits. I mean, not being. I am an African American gentleman, and I'm, a lot of people will make fun of why they put all the black guys together. But I'll tell you what, if they weren't black, if they were Mexican or anything, they fit well together because of Big E's, like, strength and Kofi's high flying. I mean, they work well together and Xavier, it they all three mesh so well. Right. It's not like one of those, okay, we put everybody together but they don't fit. Right, right. And it's not like we haven't had very uh, culturally divided tag teams. I mean, we were sitting there watching the the, the Mexicans were teamed up uh, in or Puerto Ricans, I'm sorry, in in, in uh uh uh, Los Matadores and stuff, you know. I mean, that's that's just the way they do tag teams. Is the thing that makes sense. Uh, Joe, what do you think about the, yeah. the 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 story so far for the new day? 
It has potential. Uh, mm-hmm. It depends on uh, 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 how much of of uh, a push they're going to give behind it. Kofi has always had uh, the tools to be doing a lot more than he's been doing. Um, and and Big E, which is still weird to me without the last name, um, has what they want as far as somebody with power, somebody with with personality. Um, I think as long as uh, uh, these guys can can be known for what they do, bell to bell, um, and not lapse into the overly campy or cartoony right. territory that uh, some of these teams getting. You mentioned the Matadors, who are kind of overshadowed by El Torito. Yeah. Um, as long as they don't get uh, uh, too cornbally or or uh, go too deep into a, um, a, a, a uncertain quasi-stereotypical zone with some of their behaviors um, that they've kind of been dancing around, pun not necessarily intended, um, then I think they can be solved. They need to be taken seriously, and they need to have their athletic displays uh, uh put forth first and foremost right. without being a punchline or without being one dimensional, because you have at least two potential breakout stars, um, nothing against Xavier, but we really haven't seen all that he's capable of, but there's a lot of potential in the team if they're nurtured. Right. 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 I am worried because that, that they are, that their attitude is overshadowing a bit. You know, at least so far, how they're interpreted. Um, I feel like I'm not a I'm not a big fan of, of when Big E has the um, uh, you have to call it Devon esque uh, preacher type uh, yeah. uh, approach to him. Yeah, I'm yeah. not really sure how that uh, how that fits into. I don't know. I I, I mean <laughs> the 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 whole. You have like a motivational speaker slash quasi religious undertone, and I'm not really sure if they know what they're fully supposed don't, to be. Don't, don't you sense. feel like? Don't you feel like? Like because he started doing that several months ago. I think when he first took took on Rusev, maybe, maybe a little bit before. And I, don't you feel like like he started that, and then they said, "Oh, hey, we could do a faction with that. Like we could grow that up." And 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 the vignettes. I thought the vignettes were great. They were. They were. They were unique. It piqued um, your interest. They put a lot into those. And you know what? You're probably right. And, and sometimes that's all it takes just to see that that one little spark and, and mm-hmm. to get a vision off of that. So um, again, if they have the substance to follow through with it, and I, I'm sure they'll get uh, a great momentum working with uh, with Gold Dust and uh, and Stardust. So um, you know. Uh, the potential is there, as I said. So uh, the ball's in their court. I'm pleased to see that we're getting like something of a tag team story that doesn't revolve, revolve the title. Because even with as many good tag teams as we've had, it seems like we still fell into that, well, who's the title? And everybody else is just kind of doing whatever. Uh, it, 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 and maybe it's just because New Day is so new. Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know Uh, that that we are getting like uh, uh, something else on the side here. I mean, it always feels like like there's room for more stories in the tag team division, especially with as many good ones that we have right now. And and uh, you know, I'd like to see them explore that a little bit more. But awesome. so thanks everybody. Email you two uh, uh, can please email, be part of the show, ask us questions for discussion to kick off the show right at good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Good time. That one, that one right there. Um, so I want to take a moment to thank our friend Slice on Broadway, providing great pizza here. So I have a question. Oh, what what what's that, LB? Listen, I'm coming to the studio next week. You are coming to the studio le- uh, next yes, week. Yes, I am. Yes, yes I am. And yes. I have something very special. You do. I do. You do. Uh, I have uh, I have been able to lay hands on an authentic bottle of Petri wine. Oh, the uh, the longtime sponsor of uh, of Panel Riot. Yes, or, uh, of course, my, Panel Riot, my, the uh, fine podcast that you do outside the Wrestling Mayhem show about podcast. comic books. Which, by the way, I mean, some I, I've had a good discussions with some wrestlers this weekend that are big comic book fans. And I recommended your show. Excellent. So. Oh, well, thank you very much. That explains the jump in numbers this week. <laughs> um, 
Anyway, the, what I'm saying is I got some Petri wine. It's a delicious Petri uh, uh, Pinot Noir, right? Okay. I don't know what that is. What on what, – it's a red wine. Okay. It is a red wine. What can I get to pair with a delicious Pinot Noir that will also be in the studio, Sork? Well, I presume because it's a red wine, it will automatically go with other things that have red in them. And for that, I give you Slice on Broadway pizza. Great stuff Same here. Reason. In yeah, It's logic, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm no wine expert, LB. But uh, I, 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 neither am I. We need to get intern Stan on the ship. Intern Stan needs to get on this. I don't know if intern Mike uh, may may have some knowledge as well. He seems like a classy individual, uh, so we'll, we'll touch base <laughs> with him. Maybe he can let us know in the chat. Um, <laughs> he is. No, I believe you. I just like how you put it. Ah, whatever. He seems classy. Seems classy. Seems you know. <laughs> I'll go to him before my you know cousins that live in wine con- country in upstate. Anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sliceonbroadway.com that's what we're trying to get to here <laughs> great pizza down here in, in, in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh also a great location uh, down in Carnegie PA on your way out to the airport I tried to get Vince Russo to stop off on the way in uh, a few weeks ago but uh, alas uh, right down on Main Street great pizza they have great gourmet pizza I represent the Gonzo it's not on the menu but they'll do it do it if you ask nicely and especially if you tell them you heard about them on the wrestling mayhem show because they love podcasting we love good pizza it's a great combination we'll have a we'll have some pizzas here next week for all the guests coming in uh for wrestling mayhem show for awesome cast and uh check them out slice on broadways on social media facebook uh instagram and twitter it will make you hungry try oh they're experimenting with stuff all the time there lb have you been looking at this stuff it's been driving uh, me nuts. It's been, it's been a while. And it's dangerous since they are right down the street from me. So. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> and they're not even the closest pizza shop. But I shun that other one that doesn't cook their cheese. That other one is garbage. It is. It is completely. Yes. Uh, so with that, we do have a voicemail from our friend in the mainstream media, uh, Mr. Matt Carlin. So let's check in and see what he's got to say this week. I know his uh, uh, wife of the Matt, uh, Jen... Carlin's last night was very wife, vocal. Wife of wife, the uh, well, it's not wife of the show. That that's somebody else. That is, that is a different wife. That is his a different wife. wife. His wife. <laughs> his wife. Yeah. They, nobody else Ugh. can do it like that. So let's uh, check in and see what he's got to say. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's not working. Oh, Matt I gotta do the Carlin's. thing. We summon ah, Matt Carlin. I screw this up every week. I'm sorry, guys. Mayhemers. <clears throat> it's your uh, pal in the mainstream media. Don't interrupt me. I have important things I need to say. Can't interrupt uh, you. It's been nearly Sorry, 24 buddy. hours since the end of Monday Night Raw last night. Okay. And I'm still pissed off. Okay. I'll tell you about the two things that I'm pissed off about. Okay. Because I know you're all so curious. First of all, why do you have Charlotte get pinned in her first match on Raw. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Don't give me this crap about paying your dues or whatever garbage. Don't show the developmental people can't pin the top people. That, that, that's, that's just garbage. It's all garbage. It doesn't make any sense. Paige, Paige pinned Divas Champion on her first night in the company. Why can't Charlotte win on her first night? It's just Natalia. Freaking let her win. All right. Now, second point. The superstar of the year last night, um, being won by Roman Reigns, made me walk away from the television and nearly turn off the show last night. Now, I know it's 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 not necessarily on the up and up. I think we can all agree. Can we all agree that Roman Reigns didn't legitimately win that vote last night? Just okay, we can all agree that. Now, can we all? understand that him winning this award is a big disservice to his future popularity. I mean, I don't understand even if they do want to shove him down our throats, even if they do want us to like him, don't make it so freaking obvious. Show a little tact. Show a little bit of restraint. Make us want it. If you don't make us want it, we won't want it. (laughs) What? I, it's, it's just baffling to me. Anyway, I eventually did watch Raw. It was as disappointing as 
because I knew it was going to be. It's just frustrating right now. It was very hard to be positive last night, probably because Bobby forced me to be positive last week, and all my rage bottled up, and it came exploding out last night as I watched Raw. I despised nearly everything I saw on television last night. Really? And uh, I'm not ashamed to say that. So, uh, I don't know. There was a question in there somewhere, wasn't there? All right. Well, anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I'm going to go decompress. Peace out. Okay, uh, Mac, oh, we did talk a little bit about the, the, the Rowan Reigns, so there's a little bit of that. Um, a lot of the people I voted for uh, won last night, uh, mainly Hugh Jackman. Nice. Yeah. Nice. He was yeah. the best celebrity of the year. I mean, he's the most involved in, uh, yes, you know. Um, mm-hmm. oh, what was the first part he talked about? <laughs> best, best celebrity every year. Best celebrity every year, yes. Um Oh, uh, Charlotte, that was what he was talking about. Um, yeah, that was weird. Especially when you have one NXT person on to presumably, well, they did actually plug the um, NXT TakeOver, which is more or less their pay-per-view. is their thing on WWE Network. It's going to be live this Thursday. Um, and you plugged it by taking your Divas champion and making her lose on Raw? Like sure, yeah, Joe, you're 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 the guy with the the booking experience, current sure. and past. I mean, I can you help me wrap my head around this? I am assuming uh, the logic behind the decision would have been that Charlotte is not a regular act on the show yet. Right. I don't believe that Monday's appearance was a call up quote unquote. No. And Natty is currently in her story with uh, Tyson. Um, not to say that that was necessarily the right decision, quote unquote. It did uh, to some extent demean the NXT women's title. Um, I don't think it did what it could have to, I mean, it established Charlotte as a personality, but it didn't, uh, certainly didn't make me want to pay, uh, somewhere around the ballpark of $9.99 to watch her get her butt kicked by whoever her opponent is uh, later this week. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe they, they did they do it just for the just for the visual of Tyson celebrating in the corner in front of Natalia to, to, to further that. And, and, it's, and keep in mind, they were in Flair Country. Were they? Where were they? Um, were they in Charlotte last night? Or Greensboro oh, yeah. or something like that. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, but well, there, there was somewhere in that vicinity. Maybe that's why she lost. Then you can look at the history of Jim Ross and Rey Mysterio and everybody else that gets humiliated in their hometown just for kicks. Mm-hmm. And 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 I defy anybody to explain why any of that's happened. Um, but I don't know. It was. Uh, it was. It was. Probably not the, uh, the 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 smoothest way to introduce talent and 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 plug a a uh, I guess it's not a pay per view but a super card um, and I would I would wager to think the problem just stems from the fact there's so much time spent on your top segments of the shows that uh, a lot what a lot of what takes place in the middle falls through the cracks and right. I don't think that was probably thought as in detail as it could have been yeah. Yeah, and especially since the only mention of the biggest thing happening on network, well, I guess. I okay. Here's another thing I just realized. So we have a live event Thursday, and then we have a pay per view that Sunday as well. Mm-hmm. Have, is do they usually pair these up on pay per view weeks? I, I, I know Joe, you don't, you don't, you don't follow that that part as closely. Um, but I, I, I can't. I honestly can't recall. Um, which makes you wonder if that's kind of a ramp up strategy when they do that uh, to get people on the network like that week. Say, hey, look at all this live stuff, you know, and they that's do that. Possible. Well, we we know that uh, the Vince McMahon podcast was yeah. a big part of that. Yeah. Um, you schedule events that close together, though, something is going to suffer. And you can look back at any experiment when WWE's done two pay per views in two weeks, mm-hmm. whether it's been Survivor Series and Tuesday in Texas in '91. Or uh, Survivor Series and uh, ECW dismem- December to Dismember in 06. Both times, uh, one of them flopped. And not to say NXT it would be necessarily expected to do the same numbers as TLC, but it's definitely going to be overshadowed. Right, right. 
Um, and I think there's different expectations overall for NXT uh, as well. Like, I, it's it's uh, it's definitely serving. I don't know how to label it. The more Mark fans, the more us fans, I guess you could say. Because, like, to me, we've said this several. Like, it feels like WWE's indie fed. You know, it feels like WWE's like you know Ring of Honor or WWE's whatever. You know, um, and. Uh, and I don't think that appeals certainly to the John Cena fans. Sorry, Will. Um, like, it's okay, r- Sorry. You can't see me anyway. No, I can't. Well, I think that's the magic of of the NXT show, which mm-hmm. is is kind of like a, a limbo period between between being just an indie guy and, and being a mainstream attraction that that the John Cena fans of the world can uh, uh, can embrace. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think the more John Cena fans, for lack of a better term, are watching the show, uh, I think that's a big positive for them. That shows that that they're developing these personalities in a way that's um, that's catching fire and creating interest. This is I'd like to get your thought on this because we had this this uh, bit of commentary I think last week on the show or somewhere in between. Uh, but the idea of uh, you know they're 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 building out these personalities on NXT right. Uh, we've seen the Wyatts for first of all develop and seen how they've caught fire coming up to the main roster. But then we have other things like uh, Adam Rose who who did crazy. You know, uh, you know, I loved him in NXT. Feels kind of flat currently in WWE, or even you know, from from the start, definitely not as excitable as, as back then. Uh, nobody seemed to know or care who Charlotte was last night. Um, um, Emma, who everybody went nuts for, and actually, you know, kind of helped her develop and get behind her awkward character in NXT. Are we having? And obviously, it's a whole different audience. It's a smaller audience that that kind of has these regular in jokes, and they can get behind, or uh, you know, much like you see on a, on a small indie show. Like we we're seeing, you know, these oddball things happen at court time in IWC, right? But they don't happen out in Clearfield, right? They, sure. These these small, intimate crowds just react differently from place to place. Do you see the kind of a suffering if people, you know? Are there certain things that are just only going to work in NXT? Um, not necessarily. Uh, I, I think there's a niche market to it, and there are certain, and even you can look at, at any episode of Raw or SmackDown, and you can see certain things, whether it's uh, a pre-tape or some uh, random name drop from JBL on commentary. There's certain things here and there that that's designed to appeal to that niche. Um, I, I think. The greater issue that should be looked at is um, uh, is just overall presentation. Case in point, um, when the ECW brand was around, uh, other than the fact it was called ECW, pretty much everything else about it was a, was a, a, a very positive thing. It helped launch Kofi Kingston. It helped launch Punk. It launched uh, Matt Seidel as Evan Bourne right. and, and a number of other guys by by giving them uh, a spotlight. And it, it, re, it uh, Miz and Morrison reinvented themselves. Uh, Big Show reinvented himself. Mark Henry and, and the list goes on. Um, and they were being they were able to be treated as big deals for that sixty minutes because the roster was so thin because they were able to, to, to have the 15 minute TV matches because they were able to have the time and the TV time to develop their personality. Uh, Emma was just kind of thrown out there in, you know, uh, we know she does the dance, but do we know a lot about her? Do we know where she came from? Does she have any goals? Does she have any objectives or is she just out there dancing? Um, Adam Rose. First time uh, uh, I saw his entrance in NXT, I loved it. It was very different. It had energy to it. And that's a case where you take the intimacy away. That could hurt a little. Um, But again, you invest the right amount of time into the character. um, I think you can you can uh, uh, supplement a lot of that. And the best description of of, of Adam Rose um, uh, I heard is, well, they're trying to make him Russell Brand, but he can't, he can't swear, he can't do drugs, he can't be overly <laughs> promiscuous, and that's everything that makes Russell Brand cool. Right. So what do you have left? Um, so uh, I don't think you can just just uh, generalize it as uh, 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 NXT market versus WWE market. 
I think you just need, and I think that that can be SmackDown. Uh, take uh, uh, you know three or four segments of SmackDown and really spotlight um, you know these young guys coming in and give them that that little ease in to, to the mainstream audience. Just because there's not a official brand split anymore doesn't mean we need to see everybody on every show. Right. You can still have uh, 20 guys on this side of the fence, 20 guys on this side of the fence, right. and, and your top five or seven to crisscross and fill angles as needed. But uh, just don't give up on the character and give them a chance to sink or swim and, and not be hesitant about it. It's um, we were actually talking about this a little bit last night, uh, maybe on the wrap up. I'm sorry, it all fa- it all fades together because we're all on hangouts so much talking about wrestling. <laughs> I can't remember where we record and don't. But uh, you know, I I feel like uh, like for instance the the Tyson you mentioned about the brands and and, and all the shows and everything. Um, I feel like some of it suffers. Like some of us uh, really enjoy the Tyson Kid uh, Natty angle, right? But some of us have watched that from Total Divas to NXT to maybe main event Raw, right? If you're a person that just watches Raw, and how many times we say, you know, the WWE say we're trying to catch the ca- the casual fan more, right? That person's not going to get it, you know? No, it was, and, and, was that you? Yeah. Well, yeah, you were I, trying I to it figure it out. Night and I, you, you, I, I said, with all due respect, I don't understand why you guys right. enjoy Tyson Kidd so much. And the response was, well, you have to watch everything else that he's on right. to get the joke. And that's kind of that realization that things are kind of s- split out too much, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we can't watch, you know, six hours of wrestling a week just to get this one little thing for the 10 minutes of Raw, right? Uh, yeah, and that, their, that, that doesn't serve the casual fan at all. Right, but it shows that they are doing good things with those other shows because that means that Tyson Kidd is getting character development. Yes. He's not getting it on Raw, but he's getting it on these other shows, which is good because it is showcasing these other guys. I I, I completely agree with Joe that SmackDown is a vast, untapped resource that has had zero interest for too long. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like they utilize it properly. It's like... I feel like they've gotten real comfortable with it being the B show and it doesn't have to be, Mm -hmm. it can be a, you know, a two show. Well, I I think you're also going to see, uh, one, I, I watch SmackDown, SmackDown. I sit down Saturday, Sunday morning, whenever I have time and I sit down, watch it like, as opposed to raw is really our kind of social event. The three hours is one of the things that kills it. Uh, uh, we talked about like the G I really enjoyed the GMs on there, uh, the last couple of weeks. And, And I think Mike made a comment about how, uh, well, they, you know, it's pre-taped. They can work with it a bit more, right? Um, there are certain things that that pop up that a little bit more development, a little bit more play. Let's see what happens when we don't like automatically fit John Cena in that in that headline role for the show. Like like for a while, we were getting shows around Dean Ambrose, you know, mm-hmm. and his feud with Seth Rollins, or, or or around somebody else that that that's that's bigger, but not you know. A lot of times, Randy Orton for a while, and that was boring, but. Um, but I think there is a bit of showcase there, and I think there is. I think I did see some 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 talk that you know, of course, they're moving to Thursday, so they're going to be pushing big time. So it will be an A show until they get bored with it again. You know, because mm-hmm. we always see that, right? Like I feel like when we have this, like remember when it was announced, hey, CM Punk will be on SmackDown because it's a B show. We don't let them have CM Punk all the time or John Cena or something like that. That was a big event. It's like, well, why is it if you're not brand split anymore, but I, I but I, I agree. I think I think it needs to be a little bit. You know, um, I mean, er, the, everybody's already split off into the SmackDown Raw live shows. You know, uh, so they can run you know twice the shows uh, house shows every weekend. So why do they have to converge and and people have less places to to play during the week on TV? So, oh, that's my thoughts on that. Speaking of exposure on television, uh, we've been talking about and making really, really bad comments about, sorry about that, guys, last week, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, it's good. I, I, I love how accessible it's going to be. Oh, yeah. I, I love that. It's like some new access uh, uh, to everybody. Uh, there's a few few of us, uh, Eamon and uh, Matt Carlins in particular, who who are experiencing doing the YouTube thing. They're, they're, they're pretty excited about seeing it on this venue. Uh, it's good to see that Jim Ross is going to be behind the mic again. Um, I, I have experienced very so little of New Japan to really know 
everything going on with it, right? Um, I, I to the point where Finn Balor and uh, whatever Kent is called right now, I'm still kind of warming up to the idea. I don't know if it's just the way they're doing them in NXT right now. I'm hoping I see something fantastic at uh at the Takeover Live event next next week to really kind of put me over, you know, put me over with them. Um, so uh, now, Joe, you're you're very uh, versed in in New Japan, and this coming up from Jeff Jarrett's uh, uh, quote unquote promotion promoter. I, I don't I don't know how 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 to kind of uh, categorize them right now since they're really kind of putting on somebody else's event uh, for the states. Sell me as a layman, or will as a, or LB as a, uh, as a, as a John Cena fan. Like, why, why should any of us be interested in New Japan coming on pay per view uh, uh, coming up in January? I think there's a lot of reasons to be excited about New Japan on pay per view. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you already nailed. Uh, uh, I mean, the biggest reason for me is uh, the return of Jim Ross. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, think about it. This is the first time since. 1992 that Jim is going to be broadcasting wrestling outside of the WWE system. He's not going to have his boss yelling in his ear. He's not going to have somebody else yelling in his ear. He's not going to be overproduced. Um, It's going to be Jim Ross in a wrestling atmosphere and uh, not a sports entertainment atmosphere, even though at the end of the day, those words mean the same thing, but the internet likes to polarize. it. Um, (laughs) I mean, and what an environment it's going to be to be at the Tokyo Dome. Um, this is routinely the biggest event of the year for New Japan. It's uh, it's Wrestle Kingdom 9. And, um, you know, I, I hesitate to say it, it's the WrestleMania of New Japan, but that's, that's the best way to bottom line it. Um, it's going to be different than anything you see in, uh, uh, in professional wrestling here in North America. Uh, the size of the dome, the respect from the fans, the the physicality of the style, um, and it's going to be uh, you know people say even if you don't buy pay per views, oh you got to see WrestleMania. You, you, everybody finds a way to see WrestleMania. Yeah, this is the biggest event in Japan. This everybody should find a, a reason and a way to check this out because um, sometimes being different automatically means being good. Or, 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 you know, compared to the fact that mainstream wrestling is so overproduced, so homogenized, so overscripted, so emotionless in the U.S. I think anybody who samples New Japan is really going to be blown away by, no pun intended, the rawness and the realness um, and how in your face it is. And even if you didn't have a stellar card... Um, for that ambiance alone, uh, I think it's worth the experience. But looking at the card, um, the main event, and, and a lot of these guys I had a chance to see. I was up in, in Canada this past May working for Scott Moore in Border City Wrestling. He had done New Japan Pro Wrestling versus Border City Wrestling in a best of five series. And I had the, the, the privilege of being on headset with Matt Stryker to call that show. And uh, it was my first experience of seeing a lot of guys there. Um, like Tanahashi and Okada were both there, and they will be in the main event on January 4th. And there's a lot of history behind this. Um, Tanahashi was the, the uh, uh, IWGP champion in New Japan. He was unseated by Okada. They had a very a fierce rivalry to see who was going to become the franchise player there, who was going to become the ace, as it's called, in, in, in uh, New Japan wrestling culture. And Okada, the young, cocky guy, still in his 20s, uh, not the Tanahashi's, uh, uh, not in the prime of his career either now or, or, or still yet to come. But these two guys were, were neck and neck. As far, it was like Rock Austin is the best way to put it. Okada was unseated by AJ Styles last spring. Everybody knows about that. Um, AJ recently lost the title back to Tanahashi. And uh, uh, I believe right before that is when Okada won the G1 Climax Tournament to give him the number one contendership. So three years later, we are back to Okada and Tanahashi. uh, And that's in a wrestling culture where you're lucky to find three weeks of build uh, in a main event. But uh, uh, Okada and Tanahashi have been fighting for that top spot for two or three years. It's probably the the biggest main event of this era for New Japan. And... um, 
Tanahashi and Okada, they both, and I don't know what a lot of fans have a perspective of, of Japanese wrestling, uh, um, but these guys, they got that rock star mentality. They have that personality. They have that charisma, and they can go. Um, Okada and Chris Sabin had main evented uh, one of the main events in the Best of Five series in Canada. Spectacular match. Tanahashi was in a tag match. Um, without question, the, the two biggest standout uh, Japanese imports on that show. So I'm looking forward to that matchup. Uh, of course, I mean, even if you guys don't follow New Japan, obviously you guys know about the Bullet Club, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. The Bullet, I mean, probably the most buzzworthy faction since the NWO. Um, and you're talking AJ Styles, uh, Doc Gallows, Carl Anderson, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, uh, Double J himself, Jeff Jarrett, Scott Demore. Um, and they have, have, have just run roughshod over this place. And, and they're going to be represented in, in, I think, maybe three different matches on this show. Um, AJ will be in action. And how, how often is it you see an event where AJ Styles is on the card, but he's not in the main event? <laughs> That's how specialist matches. AJ Styles and, and Tetsuya Naito will be a great match, but it's, it's absolutely not the top match. And, and AJ, in my opinion... Humbly speaking, I've had a chance to, to see him live. I've had a chance uh, to do the DVD, AJ Styles and the Missing Matches. A AJ is performing better now than ever. I think 2014 has absolutely been his year, um, but he's not in the main event. Right. And I'll uh, second that. I got to see, I had the pleasure of seeing him uh, with Ring of Honor down in Wheeling, West Virginia against Evan Bourne, Matt Seidel. And it's one of the most mind-blowing matches I've seen in a long time. And that was on TV. <laughs> it's a work. Of, it was a work of freaking art. It was. It was. And, and Seidel's another guy who's doing amazingly right now. Right. And, and and hopefully, hopefully he gets a chance to continue to 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 ply that ply his trade on a, on a big time level. But uh, along the same level, that style, the match I'm most looking forward to. And when I saw this this card, I was blown away by by this match. It jumped out to me right away. The Young Bucks. Red Dragon from Ring of Honor, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, the Forever Hooligans, which is Rocky Romero and Alex Kozlov, and the Time Splitters, Alex Shelley and Kushida, um, four-way tag team matchup for the Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship. Wow! And nice. Some of the best matches that that I've wow. seen this year. That, that and and probably you know any any fan that follows Ring of Honor, New Japan, anything like that could echo. Uh, the Bucks versus Red Dragon um, in Ring of Honor. Red Dragon versus the Time Splitters in New Japan. Uh, all four of these teams have been kind of intertwined for the past uh, year or so, give or take. And they always steal the show uh, to the point where I believe uh, Ring of Honor, last time they had uh, Young Bucks versus Red Dragon, that went on last. That went on after the Ring of Honor World Championship match. Uh, that's how special these matches are. That's how, how great the energy is that these guys exude. And I would go as far as to say that Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks, are the two hottest, buzzworthy stars, um, possible exception of AJ Styles, uh, in the business today that don't have a, a mainstream contract. Um, they, they are they're self-made men. Um, they, they built their brand on their own. And a lot of people hate them, but you know, I am as old school and purist as, as anybody, and I think they're friggin' awesome. Um, and, and to have them uh, with Red Dragon, uh, who have done amazing work as Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, um, Alex Shelley, who's probably the smoothest, most fluid master of technical wrestling he can do the most intricate things and make it look effortless. Um, I've, you know, obviously I've followed his career since almost day one. He was in IWC 11 years ago, but better than he's ever been today. The hooligans have dominated New Japan. Uh, Shelly's partner, Kushida. If you were a fan of the Motor City Machine Guns, the time splitters of Shelly and Kushida may top that as far as how well they work together. Oh, wow. And I, I, wow. Realize, I realize how high that praise is. Um, but they don't miss a beat. Um, so this 
that's going to be special. And I feel so bad for whoever has to follow that match. But uh, you, you throw in Kenny Omega, you throw in Gallows and Anderson, you throw in um, the fact that this show has something for everybody, much like uh, much like the perfect wrestling cards. It's not just flips. It's not just hard hitting. It, it's something for everybody. And it's the perfect introduction for New Japan for uh, a new audience because you're, you're not watching a random show to sample them. You're watching them at their best. Right. If you can't enjoy this show, then new Japan is probably not for you. It's, but Go ahead. Well, so, so, and I love the appeal and we're looking uh, at some of the videos that if anybody wants to look even more about new Japan, I put up a video uh, for you guys watching. There's uh, a lot of videos too. of global force wrestling.com. Exactly. You, uh, uh, all the top stars. There's some Scott Steiner interviews. And right. they talk about right. how special New Japan and the Tokyo Dome is, too. So, some good stuff about Bull Club. The, the one video I, I put up while you were first talking uh, actually showed old footage of guys like Andre and Junkyard Dog. And nice. a, a lot of guys you guys know from, from your childhood. Yeah, a lot of people don't, don't realize that, that New Japan Pro Wrestling has been around since, I think, 1972. Yeah. And, and yeah. They, they've really grown to become the top pro wrestling company in japan and in the, in the opinion of a lot of people the number two pro wrestling company in the entire world and, 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 and you mentioned a lot of names again a lot of names that we know we, even if you don't follow a lot of indie wrestling a lot of crazy names that you know from tna from from you know a couple from wwe doing doing amazing things so this, this, it's a nice mix that we do have a very americanized mix into this uh for an introduction to new japan for for the rest of us um, I guess my other question is, what 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 if we dig this? What's the next step? I I don't think they've announced anything with Go Fight Live or I'm not Go Fight Live, it's other bios, um, um, Global Force. Um, but you know what what are they, if I want to check out more New Japan or do I just uh, go back to the to the to, to the YouTube's or um, is is this the first outlet and of hopefully we think more? I, I, I know I'm uh, probably put on speculation hat for you here at this point. Hey, that's fine. I, I certainly think there's going to be more. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeff Jarrett is a guy who keeps his cards very close to his chest. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times that works out very positively for him. But uh, I have a lot of faith in Jeff because uh, look at it like this. There's only one person in the entire history of uh, the wrestling industry. And email me if I'm wrong here, folks. But one person who has taken a wrestling company, started it from absolute scratch, nothing, and turned it into a global entity. Uh, Nobody else has done that. Vince McMahon didn't do it. He had a very successful company bought from his father. Mm -hmm. Ted Turner didn't do it. He acquired from Jim Crockett. Um, Paul Heyman tried. Some respects came close, but he wasn't able to get there. Uh, Jeff did it. And now Jeff's trying to do it again. And what a hell of a story that'll be if he does. Um, So I I think what Jeff wants to do, I think he wants to uh, bring a platform for established commodities like New Japan, like AAA uh, down in Mexico, maybe some others, and probably cross-sect that with uh, the Global Force brand. And that's not only going to strengthen um, Jeff's outfit, but that's also going to strengthen these international commodities as well. And, and uh, that association and that talent exchange is going to be huge. It's not like you are uh, starting a brand with a bunch of uh, indie schlemiels. And no offense to any indie, indie schlemiels out there. A lot of them are my friends. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it's a situation where, where you have that proven commodity and, and you can exploit it. And New Japan is doing big things. Uh, the, the, the over-the-top streaming service they just announced. Right. Uh, their uh, 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 TV deal on uh, uh, cable television. The name of the network escapes me. It's the uh, the network that uh, the Mark Cuban network. Um, HDNet. Yeah, what used to be HDNet uh, before the rebranding. Oh. Um, but to say I have a 13 episode deal with that uh, to, to to bring some old footage forward. So uh, New Japan is really coming into their own right now. And uh, and I didn't even mention the fact that Jeff Jarrett will be on the show, too. I think Jeff Jarrett will be in a six man tag. So uh, Jeff's a member of the Bullet Club. So um, I think this is a very positive step one. And when you look at a dome show where there will be tens of thousands of people, you look at uh, the star power, you look at Jim Ross, you look at um, uh, 
Jeff as, as a flag bearer to that. Um, I mean, how do you start a, a, you know, loosely speaking, a promotion? How do you start a brand like Global Force Wrestling any better than that? Um, so I, I'm excited to see where it goes from here. And, and uh, I'm rooting for it, just like I've rooted for, for all big wrestling projects, because the success of Jeff and Global Force means success for the business, for the fans with more options, and for the guys with more places to work. And, and, and the other cool thing about this, you know, talk about New Japan getting out there, this is actually going to be the most available, widely, uh, uh, most widely circulated available wrestling pay-per-view in history uh, because they have involvement with something you guys probably know more than me, uh, the Flips app. Uh, yeah, I was just reading it. I'm not familiar with it, but it, it, it looks like it's an app that's going to be on uh, smartphones, tablets, and like if you have a smart TV, you can get this. So, so yeah. there is a like use for your me, Flips app to get the pay per view so, so, and and sync it up with your TV and watch it. Uh, uh, right on, right that way. So that's yeah, another yeah. great environment. I mean, another and, great and that's great for the the core cutting people like me that have the WWE Network, you know, and we're watching it there that you way. Go. You have an option. Um, mm-hmm. So, so like, you know, I'm very much considering uh, uh, going ahead and jumping into this pay per view feed first, checking out uh, if it's this big, especially since it is well, accessible. And I'll, I'll I'll tell you this: I have not ordered a wrestling pay per view in all of 2014. Except for the one I was in, of course, Mask Mania Lucha pay per view, but that's another cheap plug for another time. <laughs> um, but I'll I'll be watching Wrestle Kingdom Nine. Um, mm-hmm. I'll be watching it for the curiosity, um, the fan in me. I'll be watching it for the four way tag and for AJ Styles. Uh, the announcer in me will be studying Jim Ross and seeing um, how he differs unfiltered, and in an environment which. I know is going to get JR's creative juices flowing. I know he loves that no nonsense smash mouth in your face wrestling. Look at JR's favorites from back in the day. Look at Bill Watts right. and Dr. Death, Steve Williams. Guys will just punch you in the mouth. Um, <laughs> this is JR's environment a lot more than, than dance offs and, yeah. and, and Dr. Heine yeah. and everything else that's in his past. So, so the announcer in me is going to be watching that and, and just the curiosity to, to see where it goes because I, I I have uh, uh, no qualms or shame in saying that uh, Jeff Jarrett's previous uh, 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 employer slash project uh, I followed from day one and when they succeeded mm-hmm. I took notes and learned when they failed I took notes and learned and I'm more than happy to uh, uh, as a fan as a viewer as as a as a brother in the business to follow along with Jeff on his next journey. I think it's going to be a hell of a ride. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see how yeah. this goes. Anything to, to show, you know, it's another opportunity to show it, it's something more than what WWE is doing. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. Competition makes everybody better. So, uh, I, 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 we sparked uh, some great commentary in the chat room. I can't even catch up with all this. Eamon, of course, barely beginning this. Uh, Garza, Ciro that we talked with earlier, or uh, read his email earlier. Are going on about uh, all the great stuff. By the way, New Japan Network is 8:40 American, but it's still in Japanese. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, like the people that are listening and they have they have Jim Ross. Uh, I, I have a feeling that most of those people won't jump over and, and just listen to Japanese commentary. You know, uh, the like I say the layman fans, the LBs. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. To I make agree you with my... that too. I agree with that, and and that's mm-hmm. me speaking as an announcer. Right. But I can't get into it uh, without somebody there to. To verbally take me on that exactly. journey, exactly. And, and a great example of it is uh, uh, Lucha Underground, the other show on oh, right now. Yes, I don't get El Rey Network, right. but I do get Unimas, which is where the Spanish language Saturday afternoon replays happen. So I don't get Matt Stryker; I get Hugo Savinovich. Yeah, and I love Hugo; he's been around forever. But um, with the Spanish language, I don't under- I space out. Um, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Again, uh, special events like like uh, like Wrestle Kingdom Nine that cater more to the English audience and gradually pull them over, I think, is a much better plan than than expecting anybody to go in uh, uh, just full tilt and go through the library. Um, <laughs> but uh, that, that's definitely important. I agree with you. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. And uh, I, I watched, I was tossed some. I, I believe they were New Japan uh, matches when we were doing uh, some of our early kind of match picks on Indie Mayhem show, and there was just like a lot of yelling. 
<laughs> and it has to sound weird for, coming from the office. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to something like that being more accessible. And this is why I'm kind of hope was kind of hoping go, uh, Global Force would be was this kind of exchange exposure to to other things uh, like this. I'm really good to see it. It's a good time. Good time for stuff that's different in pro wrestling. It's hey, a great time to be a fan because oh, let's yeah. just appreciate the fact that heading into 2015. Um, there are going to be five different national slash global promotions yeah. recognized on uh, mainstream American television. That's, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, uh, Garza's in the chat room. Uh, he's saying, and I was I was actually going to ask if there, anything had been heard of this. Uh, apparently, they're announcing uh, JR's partner this week. Supposed to be someone good. Do you have any speculation on 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 who that could be, or anybody you'd like to see as his partner that that's floating around out there? Um, good question. He, uh, other than well, you. <laughs> Jeff hasn't called me yet, uh, so so I don't know. Um, certainly, that's something I'd be interested in, and something that I've floated out there mm-hmm. to Jeff. But but as I said, Jeff keeps his cards close to his vest, and I respect that. Um, honestly, uh, the the best pick, uh, and I, I speak from experience, uh, to me is Matt Stryker, um, because I thought Matt and I had a great chemistry in Canada for the yeah. New Japan Border City Show. And um, you could tell that he had a vested interest in it. You could tell he was passionate. You could tell he did a lot of homework. Um, I don't know that he's available with the the Lucha Underground commitment. Right. And I think after Matt, you have a pretty um, substantial possible drop off as far as as experienced color guys that that are familiar with the genre. So I really don't know. I'll, I'll be intrigued uh, at that uh, announcement as much as anybody. Let's throw Mac, Mark Madden at this one. That could be fun. <laughs> that could be fun. <laughs> yes. Um, it, Mark. Um, I love Mark and, and his personality would definitely be an interesting contrast to mm-hmm. the rest of the night. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think, I don't know if, if, if Mark could be talking to doing much wrestling, but to sit next to Jim Ross, I think you might have to give serious Very good. I, another guy you've had experience with, on the mic with uh, in recent last couple of years with uh, uh, IWC uh, as well, it, 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 and he hasn't lost a step as far as that goes. Hell, I think he's better. I, we listen to some of the old WCW stuff. I think he's way better than he was back then. I think Mark would admit to that. I don't think Mark would give himself high marks from well, back. Well, in the he day. sits there. He, he sits here and says, you know, I, I he he says himself, I wish I tried more back then. So, yeah. I mean, if anybody is kind of like, oh, Mark Madden, blah, you know, you know, again, he himself recognizes that and says, yeah, I wish I wish it was a little better on my side, you know, yeah. regardless I, I of what was anybody happening. that 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 uh, this is Madden can check out uh, Sorgatron <laughs> Media and some of those what 99 cent or dollar ninety nine right. uh, match downloads. Right, right, right. right. Um, and, and and see him because Mark showed respect in class he does. and did his homework and had great things to say shows. and and he would do a write up or or a podcast or or whatever after but they write up usually on WrestleZone and usually had really great things to say about the about the guys and I, I, you know hearing him backstage talking to the guys um uh really really cool to hear that yes uh, he, he's restricted his burial of meat to just Twitter so well, that's I good that. that's good that's good yeah. Um, uh, this is uh, this is just a pontification, but Mad Mike is is saying, uh, imagine Jr. and CM Punk on color for New Japan. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, he did commentary for a bit. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be interesting that to see. That would get buys. That would get buys. That would. Me. Oh, it definitely would what these is days. Shivani doing right now? Shivani isn't he doing radio or? Shivani is doing the uh, uh, minor league Atlanta Braves baseball. That's right. That's right. And uh, I, I think whatever little bit of wrestling passion is in him, uh, the Turner Network squeezed out of him a long time ago, unfortunately. <laughs> and, I, and Tony would admit that, too. Tony yeah. Tony called himself absolutely useless by the end okay. of WCW Here's, just because of how overexposed and overworked he was. Here's another guess uh, from Garza in the chat. Uh, how about JR and Steve Carino? Uh, I think Ring of Honor pretty kibosh is that, but uh, the prospect would be fun. Well, not necessarily. I know Jeff was meeting with the the, the Sinclair uh, Ring of Honor CEO oh, Joe Koff really? in order to make sure that Red Dragon would be able to be on the show and nice. maybe some of the other Ring of Honor talents. That's true. That's make true. Sure that have relationships with New Japan. Um, Steve's Steve's commentary lately is uh, again it's a contrast to the New Japan product, which could be good or bad depending on how you look at it. Yeah, yeah. He's a lot more slapstick lately. Um, I say that in a good way because I have so much fun working with him. Um, but yeah, Steve's the guy who's been to Japan like 
a bazillion times, and I'm only slightly exaggerating. Um, <laughs> he's he's a guy that's that 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 knows the product. He obviously worked with them uh, when the guys were in for Ring of Honor. So uh, the more exposure for Steve behind the mic, I'm all for. All right. On that note, this is the point where I usually plug PittsburghWrestling.com. I guess I still am in a way, but uh, you have a couple of things that we've worked on on there. Of course, uh, AJ Styles, The Missing Matches, digital download on there, as well as the DVD available at Joe-Dombrowski.com. I mean, that's a perfect instance somebody who's involved with the New Japan Pro Wrestling here coming up. Yeah. Um, I prefer to say Joe-Dombrowski.com. It's a little more uh, easy on the ears, but but I'll <laughs> accept the hyphen as well. Um, but AJ, the missing matches was, was really fun. It's got a lot of, uh, uh, rare matches that a lot of people haven't seen from IWC, from one PW in right. England, uh, matches with punk matches with Matt Hardy, with Christian, with Johnny Gargano, uh, with Tony Nese from this past year, uh, a, a rarely seen rematch, uh, other than the, than the two they had on, on pay-per-view with AJ, Christopher Daniels and Samoa Joe, plus the sit down interview that I did with AJ uh, where we talk about some some hot topics throughout his career, uh, pick his brain, and and throw in a few of the missing questions as well, a few things that no other interviews uh, were able to encounter. And I've recently said, like I I, I I was talking with somebody and I said I, I'm not really interested in straight shoot interviews as we see so commonly these days. It was a good kind of just behind the scenes conversation. It wasn't a big bash fest. It wasn't it wasn't um, it was just a you know what was it like with this and you know. It, it was a very it open was conversation. Very, it was very conversational. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It wasn't. It wasn't just uh, lather, rinse, repeat. Thoughts on this. Thoughts on this. Thoughts on this. It was uh, a, a glimpse inside AJ's head, and uh, then we get you to some action that either uh, illustrates or complements uh, a lot of what we talked about, <laughs> and uh, and 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 continue that formula. And uh, I've heard some good reviews and some good feedback, so uh, I appreciate that. And. Uh, I believe uh, we'll probably be doing some more missing matches next year. Yeah, it was Ford. a lot, of, lot of fun to do that one. Um, uh, it was really cool uh, working with AJ, and uh, yeah, it was really, uh, really proud. One of those pieces I'm really proud of working on. Um, Out of all of the talents I've worked with at four in the morning, AJ is my absolute favorite. And <laughs> well, we won't get into who's the low, low end of that, but. Uh, <laughs> we know in the circle. Um, anyways. My favorite was Steve Carino's costume changes between our interviews at Ring of Honor that one time. <laughs> that you, you can check out on the Montreal Theory. Um, yes. I think a good thing we didn't get him after the match because I'm pretty sure he was bloody. Uh, I love the fact that by the time we released the DVD, he'd already gone through about five additional hairstyle changes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's like, when did you get this guy? But anyways, I digress. Go check out that. Joe Dash. Uh, Stombrowski.com, PittsburghWrestling.com as well, and all the other great stuff. Finding Zach Gowan, uh, Montreal Theory, uh, Referee well, keep 101. Keep my hot news coming out of my outsourced announcing voiceover commentary, too, in oh, the yeah. sense that now you can not only have me call your matches, do your commercials, your voiceovers, whatever, from home, save trans expenses, uh, easy and convenient, but also you could have me teamed up with the legendary – franchise shane douglas awesome me and shane worked on border city wrestling in october it was a great time and now we are open to indie companies Mm -hmm. if you want the dombrowski douglas combination outsource and outs can bring it to you and you ain't gotta pay either one of us to travel (laughs) (laughs) two guys that just don't want to leave pittsburgh and i don't blame them Travel's tough out there. Um, All right, on that point, go check that out. We'll be right back with Remember When. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net. This is Johnny Gargano, the bee's knees, the cat's pajamas, and the whole shebang. Not Johnny Bananas, by the way, even though I like to eat them. You're watching the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And we're back, and uh, please go check out everything uh, Joe-Nebrowski.com PittsburghWrestling.com and check out New Japan at GlobalForceWrestling.com I think we're finally excited about something Global Force is doing, not just pictures of Karen and Jeff Jarrett uh, and hats. Uh, so it's good to see. I, I'm really glad to see that a lot of people are getting excited about that here uh, on the show as well. We got with us, joining us in the second half, Bobby F. J-Town, 
is with us know, from buddy. Johnstown, PA. How you doing, sir? And also, good, good. the Riz, also from the Pittsburgh area. Hi, Sorg. Get into it Riz with us Pittsburgh. for Remember When. We're going to talk Hi, a little Fox. bit of TLC right. and NXT TakeOver coming up this week. Uh, but first, let's start with Remember When. <laughs> can't remember when and remember again okay um <laughs> uh so of course we I'm talked sorry. a lot I'm about sorry, everybody. foreign so wrestling new japan we're talking about lucha underground how big it's getting out there and it's not just american wrestling and loving it so we thought remember when let's pull let's pull back a little bit and talk about foreign influences wait what Wait, yeah. is that what we said? Wait, which one we settle on? <laughs> How do we say that? Again? Wrestler. Foreign wrestlers. Foreign wrestlers. I was well, say international wrestlers. wrestlers. I was say foreign yeah. objects. Steel In- chairs. International wrestlers. Uh, your favorites over the years. Uh, LB, do you have one? I do. Okay. William Regal. Oh, the Ooh. best. He's British, and he is hands down one of the best villains professional wrestling has seen, and it is a shame how much of his career has been squandered to shitty storylines and not being taken seriously. And he's Bill- an excellent wrestler. He's a wonderful villain, and he is my pick for uh, international professional. Wrestling. Lord Steven, if you're nasty. He's the guy, man. He, I, I, I watched the one part where they're talking about how, how bad Goldberg was back in the day, and he couldn't do six minutes with Regal. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, and they showed parts of it and how bad it was. It's like, mm-hmm. man. Uh, what about you, V-Riz? You know what I'm going to say, Sorg. Might have an idea. Do you have an idea? Wait, is this in, the in, video in the chat room? In heart. Yep. The the man, the myth, the legend, the great Kali. That's right. He, and he sends me a video to queue up at it while we're at it. <laughs> I do. Uh, did you guys know he had ta- uh, 50 moves <laughs> at one point? The top 50 moves and of the great you know Kali. What? Some of these moves are pretty good. Oh, wow. Look at this, like, non-WWE footage in here. Yeah. I think he was in New Japan. Or, no, he was in New Japan. I think he was in New Japan. He might have. At one point. Uh, but, yeah. Dude. When he came into WWE, he was a monster. But now... Uh, okay, let's be real. He's, he, now he sucks. Right? <laughs> oh. He's he's the Rey Mysterio of big guys, but but he he destroyed the competition when he was here. Uh, we just, shoulder block number forty nine. I'm sorry. Shoulder. Oh no, there it gets better. Sorg, there's a punch in there. I saw the punch. I saw the punch. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. Oh. I love it. Great, Kali. Uh, honorable mention to Renjin Singh. What about you, Bobby oh. FJ Town? Um, I'm going to go with everybody's favorite international wrestler, Ludwig Borga. Oh, <laughs> nice. He was there for about two weeks. Real solid. And then, and then I tell just, you what. Yeah. Can, can I pick a defector? Sure. To another nation? Does this count? Yeah, why not? Because who was better than Sergeant Slaughter as the Iraqi oh. sympathizer? I so, want my country back. Oh, that that got me. That got me. That, that I was watching that with my Desert Storm trading cards. Sword. Yes, I also had Desert Storm trading cards. <laughs> yes, yes. So did I. Yes, Sword. I was completely yeah, feels, sold Sorg. on that. Sold on that. And, and it made it even more real to me because like, I was like, well, this is like the first war we experienced in our lifetimes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, one of many. <laughs> and we've kind of gotten used to it. I'm still waiting for my Iraqi freedom uh, trading cards. Um, yeah. But, yeah. It shows you how much of a joke that war was, by the way. <laughs> that they had trading cards. Anyways, uh, let us know your favorite in, uh, foreign wrestlers. This is nice when we only have four people. This is quick. <laughs> uh, uh, we have some in the chat. If we, you oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, of course. Yeah, please. Get, uh, what we got in the chat? Well, first of all, Tony Garza, the great collie, was really fucking ripped back mm. in the day. Uh, and Mad Mike says, ooh, maga. Ooh, maga, yes. Umanga. Umanga. 
Samoans counting in this? Uh, it, it, Mad Mike is, let me know, Sorg Hacksaw was it, Canadian and better than, than Slaughter is uh, with Iraq. Um, no, well, well, okay. It made me cry, but not for the right reasons. Let's be honest about that. Wait. What? what what's the wrong reason, Sorg? Uh, well, uh, because he was Canadian, it was just sad, and it was Hacksaw. Oh, he found like the hey, TV title. I saw in the trash Hacksaw Jim Duggan on Saturday night. Oh, it was uh, it was a very interesting experience because uh, the crowd started singing the national anthem to assist him in winning the match, <laughs> and it worked. They got to the wow. Rockets' red glare, and he pinned uh, his opponent one, two, three. Oh wow, that's amazing. Yes, that's, it was very cool. That is Baron Corbin esque. Antonio. Uh, <laughs> Adds on to Alberto Del fucking Rio. Oh, geez, him yeah. recently winning the the Alberto AAA Rio. title down there. That 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 picture floating around of him bloody holding the title. Damn. Oh. I want to say, uh, where's that? Where's I hope Global Force brings us AAA in the near future, or something like that. Uh, Lucha or, Underground already has AAA. Oh, there. Okay, there's that too. Yeah. But but I'd still like to see actual like I want to see that match. I want to see Del Rio in his element and see him go. So, mm -hmm. all right. And let us know. Uh, uh, hashtag remember when. Hit us up on uh, at Mayhem Show on Twitter or uh, on Facebook or Google Plus for Wrestling Mayhem Show as well. And uh, with that, hey, let's get into. Of course, there's uh, two big events. We we talked about them uh, briefly here with Joe Dabrowski uh, uh, just a little bit ago. Uh, but of course, this Thursday uh, on the WWE Network, so it's a pay event of sorts. Is the NXT Takeover? What is it, Revolution? going our on no, no. our evolution our evolution yep. oh wordplay look at that, yeah. look at that. Ah, of course we got sneak. finn blair finn, finn baylor hideo itami speaking of of some new japan guys uh hideo, if i'm not mistaken hideo, sorry. hideo itami hideo. and i could chant kenta um taking on the ascension <laughs> again like i said this is gonna be what sells it for me on these guys and having never oh. seen them in, in their previous what everybody's crazy about right let's see how they can go um i've been seeing little glimpses but i i generally kind of tune out when these guys pop up um i hope that um uh, uh finn valor said on uh last week's nxt he's going to bring a surprise okay um, I hope it. I hope like hell it's the face paint or the body paint. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, son. Mm -hmm. you, uh, that could be. That could be. Yeah, you said he's going to bring a surprise, and I was like, it's mm -hmm. the only. Like, <laughs> his entrance is already cool. Yeah, yeah, but it'll help him stick out even more, and I yeah. think that's, yeah. that that might be needed. Hey, by the way, side note. <laughs> side note: Garza says AAA published the uh, those matches on YouTube. Uh, he says he'll hook us up on the Facebook for Wrestling Man nice. Show. So, so I'm looking forward to check that out. Uh, Mad Mike is yelling at me. Sorg, have you seen the Vod Villains promos? Because you need to see the Vod Villains promos. Are we talking about the ones on the show? Uh, they need, you need. If you haven't seen the Vod Villains promo, you need to see the Vod Villains. Promo. The, the silent movie stuff is tremendous yes. that they're doing. <laughs> They are wh whoever we, we talked about this before. Oh, you guys talked about this on yeah. the midweek war who yes. about whoever is making those needs to get hired by WWE. If there's they some need, student like, or something. Like I've always said, they need vignettes back and these are vignettes. They're amazing. And they're vignettes. doing it right. <laughs> they're doing so much for the little show that they're making at, 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 at full sale university, you know, they're so great. <laughs> you sir ha or ma madam have graduated. Yes. Congratulations. Exactly. Nice. Um, that would be a great thing on your resume. But they're taking on, of course, the Lucha Dragons, another IWC uh, 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 alumni in, in Callisto, former Samurai del Sol, uh, in Sin Cara. Guys, we're excited about Sin Cara, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's be, let's be honest. Hunico. Yes, <laughs> but still, like, finally, <laughs> like, the Sin Cara character has found it's, its yeah. place. It's Hunico. I mean, yeah. yeah. Hunico was always awesome. Let's be honest. Yeah, that. yeah. yeah be he was always the better Sin Cara. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I look forward to that. I think that's going to be a tremendous match with those guys. Oh. I, you know, I, I think I hope we stick with Lucha Dragons as a chance for a bit, though. Quick I, I, side story, and it kind of relates. Um, I listened to the Chris Jericho podcast with Sami Zayn and uh, Adrian Neville, and they, they uh, Sami Zayn, somebody took his hat backstage. 
Um, and and he blamed Sin Cara because he's a, like a jokester backstage, and Sin Cara immediately was like, "What do you mean? I, what what do you mean I took it? Is that are you racist?" <laughs> and he's like, "No, no, no, because you're a jokester, you know." <laughs> like, it, wow. It was a really good story though. It was funny. That's but it, awesome. it ended up it was Tyson Kidd, and he came out wearing how, it with under his hood. So how was that? Was it like a leg- what were they? You know, did they did they talk to both was, of them together or? It was a really cool like interview with them too. They talked about like from back in the day when they were both in the Indies traveling around, how mm-hmm. how long they've been in the business, like stories from like back way back when, how many countries they wrestled in together. So I mean, it, it's a really interesting uh, interview if, if you pick it up. That's nice. Um, he inter- like Jericho interviews like the his new basis in Fozzy, but you can skip all that. I usually do. You, yeah, uh, the general the role. Hour of any <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. You skip the first twenty minutes of yeah. any podcast one wrestling because yeah. if you're yeah. you're there for the interview anyways, right? Exactly. You know, exactly. You know, I don't care about Jericho taking his kids to see Judas Priest. You know, oh, I, 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 I I care about that. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. Getting back on topic, Sorg. Yeah. The, the main event's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yes. This is yeah. and. And also the debut of uh, Kevin Owens. Well, 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 let's speak on the main event for a moment. Uh, of course, you got uh, 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 Neville and 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 and, and Zayn. Uh, this has got to be it, man. This, this has got to be it. I, whatever they do here uh, has to be pretty tremendous, right? Yeah, these guys. These guys every time I watch NXT, these guys are wrestling each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I can I can watch them even more times. Yeah, and we do have the stipulation that he's gonna. What do you say? Leave NXT. He's, he's done. Gonna leave, he's done with NXT. Yeah, which could be like see you on Raw next week, but who knows? <laughs> um, and you got you. Or mentioned- it could also mean he brings back a certain mask character. Generic mask. Um, yes. He had a mask already. On you NXT guys had some great speculation, and, mm-hmm. and I don't want to get too big into it, but check out the Midweek Wars. It's on. It's on iTunes. Uh, it, they're they're up on the site. They're up on YouTube. Uh, Mike. Well, first of all, uh, Mad Mike had a really good discussion about lucha underground so if you're curious about that fed uh and, and to the point where he learns some spanish words Olay. i'm very very impressed with that uh so go check it out you guys are doing a great job over there on thursdays um, you're welcome sir. so uh and you mentioned kevin owen there uh before i wanted to backtrack uh kevin mm-hmm. steen making his debut um really i love the promo last week when he was like you know they called him first you know uh mm-hmm. uh tyler black and 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 generico and everybody else that mentioned uh, you know uh, Pac, of course and uh there's now neville um like i i and was it you guys speculating about him maybe being involved in the main event oh he's he's more than likely going to be involved okay um because you know, notice during the promo, he said he's fought, uh, he's fought Rollins, he's fought uh, 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 Neville, and he's fought mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, some His other best guys. friend. Yeah, is, he, he never said that he has fought Sami Zayn. He <laughs> said they were best friends. Yes. <laughs> Yes, in professional wrestling, and he didn't show him as Generico or anything. No. So, and you know what happens to best friends in professional wrestling? Ladder war. Wait, I I, I gotta say, um, ladder that by the way that the ladder war that they had as Generico and Kevin Steen mm-hmm. from Final Battle is the first Ring of Honor DVD that I bought. Oh yeah, but they don't last too long in the wrestling world. No, no. It's gonna be awesome, Sorg. It's gonna be great. <laughs> NXT is the show, man. It's the show. Like I, I said this on the midweek war. I'm I'm more excited about this than I am for TLC. Oh, yep. for sure, for sure. Um, it, of course, we mentioned Charlotte and uh, Shasha Banks. Uh, uh, we were talking about Charlotte a bit earlier. Yeah, it should be a good match. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not. It's probably the least I've been looking forward to the Davis match on, on NXT so far. Um, but also, hey, friend of the show news, uh, uh, former Sterling James Keenan, Corey Graves is going to be there with an announcement on the um, pre-show. Hopefully it's um, good news. Hopefully it's yeah. good news. There's been talk that maybe he has some concussion issues. I'm hoping that means, and I, th- I think even with that, he has been, I think, assisting to train at yeah, the Performance Center. Working with them. 
Yeah. So so it's good. He was doing. I believe he was doing training here uh, with a school with FNW uh, with you know his father's uh, uh, promotion for a while here in the Pittsburgh area. So uh, good to see that. I mean, he's a guy that's been around in the business, knows what he's doing, and and even if he gets like a Sarah Del Rey, Norma Smiley role, good for him. He's there. You know what I mean? Um, friend of the show, Norma Smiley. Friend of the sh- no, he's not. <laughs> No, he's he was we never oh, talked to him. Our, he was our former mascot. He was our former mascot. I got a picture with Norman Smiley, but we never had him on the show. Right, mascot of the show. That was the difference. He doesn't know it. He doesn't know it. He doesn't know it. I don't know. Maybe maybe Corey told him. Anyways, <laughs> and of course we do have TLC this weekend. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we get into that, I, sure. I have something I want to say. Oh. Uh, I've been thinking recently. I was talking to Riz a little bit earlier about this. I, I want to expand my wrestling horizons. What? Because I used to be that guy. I used to be the guy who was into into indie wrestling and and you know Ring of Honor when yeah. it was small. And, you introduced and, you know, me to small. Ring of Honor. Right. Yeah. Um, hmm. I named my fucking cat after Samoa Joe before anybody knew who Samoa Joe was. Um, different cat. This is Watson. Um, <laughs> And but and I think I feel this is a prime time. This is a great opportunity for me to do just that. You've got you've got uh, New Japan doing their thing and becoming more accessible. You've got NXT, um, you know, uh, readily available. Just begging for me to watch it. You've got Lucha Underground. It's all out there. It's all at my fingertips. So, my pledge to you, Mayhem Show listener. That's the, that's uh, an aggressive finger point. Thank you very much. It's not. This is not an aggressive finger point. This is an aggressive finger point. Oh my god! You felt, yeah. it's like you no. fucking felt that. No, please You're no. Coming right through the screen at me. My pledge to you, listener, viewer of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, is that uh, I will have more to say on uh, on different groups and different federations, and I will um, make a concentrated effort to expose myself to more professional wrestling. What I would like from you guys is to email us with suggestions. Hit me up on Twitter. I'm at DJ Lunchbox. We're at Mayhem Show. Email us, good times good at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, and tell me what I should be watching, and I will watch it. <laughs> You're getting votes everybody, for Lucha Underground. Everybody email him TNA. No. I reserve the right to say no. We're going to hold the TNA talk for next week because we kind of have an idea what to do there. So, um, uh, anyways, I love it, and maybe we'll have you on the Indie Mayhem show soon with some of your discoveries. I'm I am on board, Sorgelstein. Awesome, awesome. Um, so TLC, of course. I just run down real quick here. We talked about a lot of these guys and the stuff going on. We got the kickoff show, tables, tables, ladders, and stairs. By the way, I I, I love the modification. It's so weird, but why not, right? Yeah. <laughs> really, I, I love like the, it. I, I love the collective great. meh that just happened there. By the way, <laughs> I, I I like it. I'm different. Anything that focuses heavily on the big show is going to get a good solid meh. Okay, okay. And stay. Not his fault. Not his fault, by the way. Uh, kickoff show, of course, the New Day, Goldust and Stardust. Let's see what happens. Let's see if they steal the show on the pre-show. Um, it's all the pay-per-view at this point anyways, right? Yeah. Uh, of course, we got AJ and Nikki Bell. Bella? Bella. Bell. What? I'm, I'm sorry. Jesse Bell this weekend. Um, Lake Bell. Lake. What? Like what? Bell. I don't know. Um, I kind of wish this was like a ladder match or something. Why not? You know, we got <laughs> Dean Ambrose and Wyatt in a what is this match? It's a oh, this is the actual tables, ladders, tables, and chairs ladders, match. Chairs and do you think this is going to be the main oh event? Do you, nice. Do you think this is going to be the main event? Mm, nah, probably not. Because it's the only even namesake though, match. Even though this is called TLC. John Cena is in a main event match. Uh, that's true. That's Who true. For number John one Cena wrestling? Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins yeah. in a okay. tables match. And if John Cena loses, he is no longer the number one contender for the world title. Yep. Well, the he's one- clearly going to win. I mean, we all know that. Right. John Cena is going to win because he's John Cena. And... Um, the main event is the one with the WWE Championship. That's, oh. Oh. So weird. <laughs> That's right. So he's, weird. He's on Savannah. I have to say, so weird. I have kind of enjoyed not having Brock Lesnar and not having the title defended. 
because they are forced to come up with more interesting things. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Right. Aside from, well, it's the belt. <laughs> it's the belt? Yeah, yeah, it's great. I'm on board. I would, I would like to have somebody explain the 30-day rule. Yeah, it's like gone. Just, no, 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 no. Stop it. It's gone. It, it's not even just, consideration. It, it's we just Daniel Bryan it's convenient got, rule booking. It's convenient Jack Tunney yeah. in, okay? Well, they, Daniel Bryan got it because he was a face. Yeah. yeah. The authority figures at the time were heels. Yeah, exactly. So, um, to round out the card here, of course, we got a chairs match between Ryback and Kane. Oh, good. Meh. And Just the very thing I've always wanted, <laughs> a match between Ryback and Kane. Hey, right. hey. But that Ryan Reeves can sure swing a steel chair. Okay. Also, of course, the stairs match between Rowan and Big Show. And Rowan, you know, uh, you know, see what Rowan can do. I'm interested in this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, of I'm course, uh, uh, championship match, t- tag team title, uh, Ms. Dow uh, versus the Usos, which is always going to be entertaining. Let's be honest. That might steal the show. It almost was on Raw. I mean, that <laughs> yeah. handstand he did. He did the the best thing on Raw happened during the app last night when he did a handstand at ringside when oh, Miz was being held ridiculous. in a suplex. Oh my! Seriously, nothing is as entertaining to me right now as the shit that he is doing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Not even close. Certainly. So go check it out. We'll be uh, at the pay-per-view party, uh, a lot of us over at the Carlin, so expect plenty of, of fun Instagrams Bobby. Bobby and such Bobby. from that. Thanks to our... our, our which I almost called them sponsors. The Carlin sponsoring <laughs> the Wrestling Mayhem show. <laughs> well, you're not far off. They, aren't, they, aren't, they, they, they haven't donated on Patreon yet, so we're... No, but they donate they their, their abode and their internet connection for us to watch uh, the pay-per-views at their place. They don't, they don't put tax in candy corn, that's for sure. But, what? Bobby, I told you, he hasn't <laughs> done that since seventy. Get it together, man. I... Alright, so on that said... point, let me know what you learn in wrestling this week, guys. Uh, how about you, Bobby? Oh, I knew you were going to start with me. Um, I learned <laughs> that I, I learned that I am appreciating wrestling podcast a lot more after listening to the, um, the Jericho podcast with Sami Zayn and um, uh, uh, a- 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 Adrian Neville. I want to call him Aaron Neville because that's weird. <laughs> um, I, and we, I, I learned how he got his name Pac, which is cool. Um, and uh, – and, and the, the CM Punk podcast with Cole Cabana was also awesome, and I finally got to listen to that. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning to appreciate like wrestling interviews and stuff like that and the, the good things it brings. Perspective. <laughs> we didn't even talk about CM Punk, I just realized. Mm. I'm sorry. In the UFC. No, no, no problem. No problem. No, well, I also <laughs> just found this picture of CM Punk with uh, King Mo, uh, Renair Gracie, and... Roy Nelson Ma? No, no, that's that's something something MMA. Um, sorry. <laughs> wow. I'm Ray sorry. Nelson I'm reading Twitter. I'm reading the Twitter. Um, but anyways, uh, Riz, what about you? I I learned um, and Greg Valentine hasn't aged well. <laughs> and if, if you want to have a good time, go to. Uh, a Comic Con featuring both uh, rhythm and soul, rhythm and blues. Sorry, rhythm and blues, and have have Honky Tonk Man just yell Jimmy Hart directly towards uh, the hammer, and it's just a train wreck. Nice. I also saw um, the Honky Tonk Man on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> he spent a lot of time talking about how you should grow your hair out and then donate it. Oh. Because he does. Because huh. he does. And he wants you to know that. For a good cause. For a good cause. Oh, geez. What did I learn this week? <laughs> uh, lunchbox. What? We can go out of order. It's all right. Yeah. Oh, mm. wait. What? I always go last. So I thought... You know, we're going to mix it up a little bit. I learned that, hey, you guys, I, I think she was, Mickey Knuckles used to be in TNA. Mm-hmm. And she debuted with the RWA this weekend. 
Um, and I, I don't remember much of her in TNA, but I know that she is a super awesome person. Because <laughs> she came out... <laughs> She came out in Ninja Turtle tights nice. and shirt and the shell backpack, which I've only seen before on Facade. <laughs> which, That's awesome. Which makes me... Uh, so I learned that I want Mickey Knuckles and Facade to team up. So so when he when he gets back from Russia, first thing that needs to get booked is this. So, um, LB... I, I muted you, LB. So uh, don't 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 do that right away. Um, there you are. There you go. I hit a button. I hit a button. It's okay. Oh, what you mean, What'd you man. learn? What'd you learn, uh, LB? I learned that uh, when presented with a scenario where John Cena has overwhelming odds to overcome, uh, I will sometimes get so excited that I throw up. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a little dog that gets too excited. That's exactly right. <laughs> from exactly right. from the chat room, uh, Mad Mike learned that he he was more deserving of a slammy than Roman Reigns. Mm. Garza learned that breaking uh, that breaking Cena and conquering the streak is not enough to be superstar of the year. Uh, Mike also learned that CM Punk versus the Green Ranger is my new dream match for 2015. This needs to happen, guys. They haven't announced his opponent, right? No. They just say he's going to. But he's, I don't think he's fighting until like March. Yeah, he, first no. he's going to get a cupcake match, though. <laughs> I he's don't gonna, think he's so. Gonna, I, I have this for, in my face that he's just going to fight a giant cupcake. <laughs> he, he is. There's a guy in a cupcake. All but right. he's going to get a warm up, I think. Wow. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think, think so. I don't think they're going to throw him directly to the Wolves yet. It was a very short period of time between Brock Lesnar starting and Brock Lesnar getting a title match. Yeah, so, yeah. Brock Lesnar lost his first match. It's not didn't? exactly yes, a, no. It's not exactly a clean ranking system in the UFC. No, yeah. it's yeah. Dana it's White. Whoever, yeah, wh- whoever makes the most money. Yeah, yeah. it is. Whoever, it's the money whoever Dana match. White has a hot nut for that week, he yeah. will give him a match. So. Anyways, on that point, I see our guest for the Indie Mayhem show has showed up, so we'll wrap this up. Please stay tuned for that. It's sure to be a very interesting discussion with Church from the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. Um, we had to have a discussion about his language last week. Uh, so, But we're going to let so, him loose tonight. He's already started. He's already Yes, he has already started. Um, so Sorry. with that, thank you, Riz, at the e Riz on the Twitters. You're welcome, Sorg. At Bobby F. J. Town, at DJ Lunchbox. Did you also, me again, Sorg? No, hey. I didn't. Okay. Uh, also, at Panel Riot, do you have anything to plug, sir? I do. That's thank you very much. Uh, Panel Riot is now officially on Facebook. Yes. Uh, hey. Go and join the new Panel Riot Facebook group. Check them out. Facebook.com/slash/groups/slash Panel Riot. Uh, and also, if you go to PanelRiot.com, you will will see there is a uh, the web and there is a new button called Amazon. Click on that. Click on the banner. Shop as you would normally. We're going to get a little kickback and uh, I will finally, finally be able to start paying back intern Stan's college loans. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That, that's a, that's a bit of a different uh, look to it over there. That, you, you really turned that tumbler upside down, didn't you? Yes, I did. There you go. Go check it out. Panelride.com. Also, shouts uh, uh, our friends from the first half of the show at Hot Wheels. RWA and go check out RWALive.com for what he's involved with over there. And of course, Joe Dombrowski, who will be there this weekend at IWC Wrestling, including Matt Hardy, uh, DJ Zima, and a lots of friends of the shows, IWCWrestling.com, Joe dash Dombrowski.com, and check him out on Twitter, Joe underscore Dombrowski.com. He likes all of those straight lines on the keyboard, I guess. The hell? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to I love do. that. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what I learned in wrestling this week. Um, please check us out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Good times. 412-206-WMS0. <laughs> Tweet us at Mayhem Show. Facebook, Google Plus, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Subscribe Woo! to us on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. Comment on us on iTunes for a chance for those winner takes all uh, digitals. Um, uh, and tune in next week to Wrestling Mayhem Show 450. It's the holiday episode. LB will be here. Rich should be here too. I Riz. should. Riz. 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 In the Riz. studio, physically touching this. 
Riz, I need you. I need you to be there. For 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 you, Lunchbox. You need to shove labels in your mouth. For you. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we'll see you next week. Mayhem out. I'll do anything for you, Lunchbox. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. wait.